There it is. All right. So we're green on YouTube. Stream health is good. <coughs> Excuse me. Give myself a wave there and see how that shows up on the actual stream. Oh, awesome. All right. Looks like we're golden at a solid 30 FPS. Streaming this from the uh, 2010 iMac, which I think is the only thing I've ever streamed from. But it uh, continues to amaze me that something that's coming up on 10 years old can still handle um, at least a 720p, you know, stream. Um, it can take in the input from two different cameras uh, that are both HD, make sure that they are able to be streamed out and do all the transcoding, encoding, whatever needs to be done. And uh, I mean, at the same time, I've got the live stream open in a YouTube window, and I've got uh, my camera upstairs looking at the dog that's running as well. And we're sitting at 30% CPU, so that is awesome. So it's been a while since I've done a live stream. I'm not e even sure how many of you will show up <laughs> because at the moment it is uh, 1.15 on a Wednesday, so eh, maybe not the best time to do this, but I want to do it anyway. So we're going to go ahead and um, get started here in a little bit. Now, I haven't done this in a while. Looks like YouTube has changed a little bit about how they uh, how their live stream thing looks. So I'll do my best to keep an eye on everything and make sure I I'm giving you guys the best experience. Of course, most of you will watch this after it's been recorded and after it's been finished, so I guess it doesn't really matter, but... Yep. So, the main, um, the main topic of this video... Let's move some stuff out of the way here and get the PC actually up there. <laughs> the main topic is this thing. So this... I just realized I don't really know where the audio is coming from on this live stream, but hey, we'll just have to go with it. So this is a PC that I literally just picked up like 10 minutes ago um, from some guy locally. This is, <laughs> I guess I got to tell you a little more about why I picked it up in the first place. So well, I got to find a better place for this camera because that is not working out very well. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll make do with it. You guys know how these live streams go. So, this PC might look a little bit familiar to you guys, uh, if you've watched the channel for a long time. I don't know how much I've actually talked about it, but the first PC that I ever used was one that my grandmother purchased in about 99, 2000. Um, I was pretty young at the time, maybe six, and... I don't know how much she spent on it, but she spent a quite a bit on it, and this is exactly what it looked like. This is the same case. This is some kind of in-win um, case. I, I don't quite remember the model. Somebody just told me it was an in-win case. And it was also from the same place, Soyata. You can kind of see that on the bottom there. Soyata, I don't expect any of you to know what that is because it was uh, a small computer store where I live. Uh, they were in business up until about 2012, I think, and then they went out of business. But they built custom boxes like this in addition to doing other things. And I'm scrolling through the Facebook marketplace, which I don't usually do. I just happen to be doing it because why do I want somebody's old boat? Why do I want somebody's rusted out 99 Civic that they're selling for four grand? Why do I want that shit? Um, but I, this was one of the suggested things. And I was like, hmm, that looks kind of familiar. It kind of looks like uh, the PC that's over here, if you're looking at the stream. Um, looks very similar. Well, in fact, it is the same case. I think it's the same motherboard. I haven't actually taken a look at it. And... Yeah, I was, I was so surprised 
to see this thing up online for sale that I didn't even care that it was 10 bucks because it's in pretty rough shape. I went ahead and I just bought it. I actually got back from there about half an hour ago. I made myself some coffee, I got a snack, and here I am. Uh, I got a comment. It says, I love your computer collection. Thank you. It's nowhere near what it used to be. Um, it could have been said that my collection <coughs> before was more of a bit of a hoarding situation. But yeah, everything you see behind me is actually all I've got left. So those two PCs there down on the floor, those are sold, basically. They have somebody um, waiting for them. There's also, there's also a cinema display HD down there, kind of in the corner. Um, that I don't have a buyer for yet, but we'll see where that goes. But yeah, the, all I've got left for my computer collection, and I'm not counting my gaming PC upstairs or the iMac I'm running the stream on, is uh, everything in that middle shelf. There's a couple things you can't see. There's a Mac 512K, um, a bunch of laptops in there, iMac G3, which you can see, you know, a couple other things, but it's really small compared to what it used to be. Um, and all the stuff up on top is just some extra parts that I have, so yeah. Um, I'm glad that you like what my computer collection is now. It's nothing nothing like what it used to be. But hey, I've got another one right here that I'm kind of adding to the collection. Maybe. We'll see once I get inside if it's anything that I want. Um, so let's give you something to look at here instead of just looking at me in the corner. So, apart from the fact that this looks identical to the machine that I have sitting over there that I used to use. There was another reason why I decided to pick it up. So with my my other one, I'm trying to kind of resurrect it, make it like what I remember growing up. And I think that this is the exact same motherboard. I'm going to open this up later, don't worry, but kind of saving it. Um, it looks like the exact same motherboard. I, yeah, there's, oh, is there an Ethernet jack on there? I'm trying to stick my finger in there. I don't think there's anything in there. It doesn't feel like it. So that might just be a, um, somebody pushed it in on the case, uh, or on the, the back plate there. Yeah, I don't think there is, there's any Ethernet on board. So this very well may be the same board that my old computer had, um, except my mine had audio on board. This one does not. Now, the way that thing currently is, there's a lot to, to talk about here, so let me just kind of unpack everything. The computer that I have, um, I'll refer to it as my PC from now on, just so I don't have to keep talking coming up with names for it. My PC, um, at one point had a failing motherboard and I wasn't able to fix it. Not really anything I could do. Unfortunately, it was just dead. And I ended up spending about 60 bucks on a brand new in-box motherboard. I still have the box. Of course, I still have the board. Uh, it was a, an SE440BX2 motherboard. I still know the model number. And the original one had onboard audio, right right around here. You can see that. Um, that IO shield has the cutout for it, but it doesn't have onboard audio. And when I was looking for a replacement board, I was just so blown away that by the fact that I could find one brand new that I didn't look to see that it had no onboard audio. So, unfortunately, it's it's probably never going to be exactly the way that I remember it being with onboard audio, but I'm just kind of nitpicking at that, at that um, point. It's not really that big of a deal that I have onboard audio, but it would have been nice. So, uh, this one doesn't have it either, so maybe this is either a different board or it just happened to be one that didn't have the onboard audio. 
But we do have a sound card in there. Um, I don't know what this is yet. Again, I haven't taken it apart. I haven't so much as cracked the screws on it. If I had to guess, it kind of reminds me of a sound blaster of some kind, but I don't think that's right. Um, might be some other kind of creative card. But I think I was going somewhere when I said the other reason why I bought this, you know, five minutes ago. The other reason why I bought it was because I think it has the same graphics card that I was looking for. Again, nitpicking, but I've been, I've been looking for the same card this thing used to have, my PC used to have. And at least in terms of outputs, it's got the same outputs on it, a VGA and an S-Video. I don't know what happened to the original card that I had. It worked just fine, as far as I knew, but I think I took it out, put another card in there just to mess around with, and at some point I gave it away or recycled it, because I don't know where it is. I looked through everything. Can't find it. So, might get lucky, and that might be the card that I'm looking for, which is worth the $10 to me, um, even if the rest of it is not something I'm interested in. So that's cool. Um, so yeah, let's, we took a look at the back. There's a Windows key up here. It looks like... I can't actually tell. It kind of looks like a Windows 98 or maybe an ME key, which you can't really see. It's... Uh, I really need to figure out what to do with this camera setup here. This is not ideal. Yeah, there's a key up there. I don't know if you can read that on live stream. Probably not. I don't even know what it's for, so there's that. So what do we got on the back? Um, don't know what board this is yet, but it looks kind of similar to uh, some kind of 440 BX based um, board. It's got two PS2, two US USB 1.1s. There's no onboard Ethernet. I don't know why that's pushed in. Uh, it's got two COM ports, a uh, printer port. No onboard audio, no game port on board. Video card, don't know what it is, but I suspect it's some kind of NVIDIA card. Well, it's got a 10100 Ethernet card, modem, and some sound card of unknown type. And we'll take a look at the front, and then I think I'll open this thing up, because I'm itching to see what's inside here. Um, what do we got on the front? So we got, looks like just a pretty standard CD-ROM drive. This is a CD writer, so that's kind of cool. Um, might end up putting that in my PC. I'm not sure yet. Uh, it's got a floppy drive and a zip drive. That's kind of cool. Looks like a zip 100. Yeah, definitely a zip 100. Um, yeah, the power button does the same thing that mine does. Sticks. Except this one's pretty bad. Well, it's not too bad if you hit it in the right spot, but if you hit on the bottom, yeah, it definitely, definitely catches there. But yeah, same exact case, so that's pretty neat. Let's take a look at Puppy here, what's he doing? Sitting by the back door. Awesome. Um, yeah, why don't we just go ahead and open it back, or open it back up, open it up for the first time. This thing is actually really filthy. Um, while I unscrew it, I'll tell you a little bit about what I know about this thing. So, this thing was owned by a cabinet maker. And he actually has a business making cabinets uh, about 10 minutes away from where I live. And it's the only information I know about it is that he used it for his business. I don't know if that means it was on the shop floor for some amount of time, um, if it was in the office, or what the situation was. But uh, he used it for his business, and used it last in about 2010. So this thing hasn't been fired up, as far as I know, for nine years. That's kind of interesting. I'm kind of excited to fire it up just because of that. Um, now this cabinet making company, I don't know anything about them, but um, they look like they know what they're doing. You know, it's a very professional setup when you go in. Uh, looks very nice. So, 
I'd assume this thing is pretty well taken care of. He did say that it had a hard drive replacement at one point, didn't tell me when, so it's got some kind of upgraded hard drive from the original, what I assume was a 10 gig drive. Um, yeah, and that's all I know about it, so you're up to speed <laughs> as far as I am. Um, somebody, I was actually just about to remove this, somebody says the HSBC sticker on the side is not an asset tag. Um, for personal business and banking reference. Yeah, this is uh, who apparently whoever this guy's banker was. Um, yeah, this is her sticker. So that's of no use to me. I just tossed it in the trash. <laughs> so yeah, I really want to get a better angle for the camera because that this angle really sucks. Hmm. Don't know what I can do about that. I'm I'm really limited on where I can place the camera without setting up a tripod. I'm not setting up a tripod. Well, let's just go for it, I guess. Take off the top panel here. And it is quite dirty. I will say that much. Let's move. Hmm. Let's move me up to the corner me out of the way there. Alright, so you can see pretty well in there. I guess that'll have to do for now. So what do we got? We got a lot of dust. That much is clear. Doesn't smell like cigarette smoke, so that's... that is excellent. <laughs> that is ideal. I hate when PCs like this smell like somebody's been chain smoking next to them for the past 90 years. Um... So this is a bit different than the one that I have. What do we got for cards? I kind of want to fire this up first, but maybe I should take a look at what we've got inside. So we got a Sound Blaster Live. Uh, it's a CT4830. The modem, can't really tell what that is. It's a 3COM of some kind. Uh, Ethernet is a D-Link. Again, some kind, I don't know what it is. And the video card, which this actually might be the video card I'm looking for. Um, I might I might have gotten away here pretty lucky with this with this find. This video card is a it's a it says Vanta slash TNT M TNT2 M64. So I think that means it's 64 megs of VRAM. Uh, it's a TNT2, which sounds kind of familiar. Because um, it, it wasn't a gaming card by any means, if I remember correctly. I don't really know what I'm talking about. Let's, let's leave it at that. Um, but it looks familiar, and that name does sound pretty familiar. So this might be the video card that I've been looking for for a replacement for my... PC I've got over there. The board is, it's an Asus P3V4X. So maybe that, again, kind of grasping at straws here for what it means, but maybe the P3 stands for something like Pentium 3. Uh, 4X might be HEP4X that this thing supports. It's got four, um, got four DIMM slots on it. Two of them are populated. What do we have for RAM? One of them's a 512. The other one looks different, so it's either a 512 or a 256 if I had to take a wild guess at that one. What else do we have? Got a CPU in there. I can't really tell what it is, though because it's all covered up. kind of looks like a Pentium 3 500. But I'm not sure. I'm really not sure on that one. Um, so we got our two optical drives. Uh, there's a hard drive down here. Again, so one thing I've always hated about this freaking case is that it's such a pain in the ass to work on. It's... I, I understand why they would have built it this way, and 
you know, it's built very well, it's very rigid, but having this here, and only having this little cutout to not even be able to put most of your hand in, it's awful. It's the one of the worst cases I've had to work on by far. <laughs> not a good case. And it means that you can't, you can't access anything. It's just, ugh, so frustrating. But hey, it is what it is. Um, what is the hard drive in here? Eh, it's too packed in there for me to tell. So, I won't be able to tell quite what that is yet. Hmm. Interessante. Well, I guess the only thing left to do is to fire it up and see if it works. So why don't I... I'm gonna go grab my uh, monitor and I'll grab a keyboard and mouse because I've got a, a USB keyboard and mouse but I don't think those are going to work. Yeah, you know what? Try them anyway. Why not? Might get lucky. So yeah, I'll go grab those in a second. I've got a couple comments here. It says I have a TNT 2 for gaming after a Voodoo 2. So maybe it is a gaming card or able to play games pretty well. Interesting. Cable management wasn't a thing. No, it was not. Um, at least it kind of was until you put in IDE cables and then, yeah, there's... You kind of give up when you start putting IDE cables in a system. Um, I remember rebuilding my PC over there and, you know, I cabled up all the internal connectors, all the power supply cables. I tied them back as well as I could. And then I started adding IDE ribbons in it, and it just all went out the door. <laughs> it was, yeah, it made it look like garbage. So let's take a couple things off the desk here, and I'll rearrange and see what I can do for, um, for setting this thing up for you guys. Grab the monitor. So, in an effort to cut down on the amount of crap that I had, I uh, got rid of a bunch of monitors. But one of them that I kept was this IBM Think Vision, I think it is. It's a little, maybe a 14, maybe a 15 inch, uh, 4 by 3 monitor, but it's got, well, I guess I can't even say it's got really good colors, because it doesn't, but there's something about it, the way that it looks, the, meaning the image on screen, um, that just really does it for me. <laughs> it really fits the theme of my older machines. That got we got power and is that it? I guess that's it. I have no idea if the USB keyboard and mouse are going to work. But well, we'll see where that goes. So get some stuff out of the way here. Turn this light off. Oh, it's so much better. I really wish I had done that before, because, wow, that's a lot better. Um, where can I put myself? Maybe I'll shrink myself and go up here. Move the monitor back over here a little bit. Oh, yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Cool. So, what's left? Well, I guess we go ahead and flick the power switch. I think I heard a sign of life. All right, so I think it's ready to be powered on. So let's go ahead and see if this thing blows any flames. Oh, 
boy. Oh, wow. Okay. Can you hear that? <coughs> Jesus. Well, it definitely has the same power supply that mine did. I can tell just from the sound. Oh, and I fix it the exact same way by hitting it. How oh, amusing. Hmm. Alright, so we got some noisy fans. I think it's, it's a lot quieter now that I've hammered on that power supply. But we've got no video. And this thing only has one input, so I know that's not the problem. Um, I also don't remember hearing any post beep. So let's... Let's try to power this thing off. Dust this fan out a little bit. Oh my god. Well, turning that on is gonna be interesting. Oh god, it's so dusty. Alright, let's try this one more time. <clears throat> oh my god, there's so much dust. Oh yeah, it makes that same whirring, like it sounds like it's going and slowing down, going, slowing down, that the power supply fan, and mine did. I don't know why I'm so surprised, it's pretty much the same machine. Let's see if we can turn me a little bit. Eh, maybe not. Alright, so we got no post. What do we do about that? It needs a leaf blower? Yeah, I would agree. This thing is pretty nasty. Um, uh huh. Well, let's go with the easy stuff first. Let's pop out the RAM and pop it back in. My god, this thing is awful. So gross. It's not even like, it's not even gross dirt. It's just, I mean, probably from whatever, um, <clears throat> whatever was in this, this guy's business. <laughs> All right, well, let's try it again. <coughs> I swallowed some of it. I'm dying. You know what, we're gonna we're gonna unplug Mr. CPU fan here. Well maybe not. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're gonna unplug him. He's a noisy little bastard. Alright. So still no post. Um it's possible. Probable that the CMOS battery is toast. Let's rip that puppy out of there. Let's see if that solves anything. You know what? I think this is the card I was looking for. This looks exactly like the one that I needed. Neato Mosquito. I am so happy right now. Uh, oh, we got some comments. Sorry, I missed all those. I'm not used to live streaming. It's been so long. Uh, somebody says Reseat RAM. Doesn't, doesn't quite seem to fix it, but I will try one stick and see if that works. Um, what if the RAM is dusty? Yeah, uh, the RAM is very dusty. It needs, it needs a blowout, but unfortunately I don't have anything to clean it out with other than my brush. 
So I'll still do that, but yeah. Um, power supply, yeah, it could be the power supply. Dead CMOS battery, and uh, can cause problems. Not something I'd expect. Yeah, <clears throat> it's. I couldn't tell you exactly which boards do it because it seems to be random as far as I can tell. But I've had a couple boards where if the CMOS battery is dead and it's been sitting a long time, it'll sometimes get confused and not do anything. Um, one moment, please. Oh yeah, that's what I was doing. I completely got sidetracked there. Let's see if you can rip out the CMOS battery. And you know what? We'll fire it up without the battery. Let's see if that does anything. And flip the power switch. Turn it back on. All right, nothing yet. Interestingly, we don't have a post beep either, which is weird. Um, I think if there was, if the RAM was having an issue, we'd still have a post beep. Um, it would obviously, you know, beep to indicate that something was wrong. But that that speaker is plugged in. Well, let's take out one of the sticks of RAM. You know, we'll take both of them out, take a look at what they are. Oh boy, There's some dirty sons of bitches. So here's one of them. I'll put it on the, the higher resolution camera, which doesn't seem to want to focus. Uh, anyway, it's a 512 meg stick of SD RAM. This one is a 128 meg stick, so this was probably the original one but it is dirty. Dirty. Uh, someone says, start the PC without RAM, make sure the beeping works. Ah, now you're thinking. I did not think of that. That is a good suggestion. All right, so it looks like we got a single beep. Awesome, I'm glad you suggested that. That's something that I usually do, but I didn't even think about that. Okay, so we know that the RAM is probably good. So I'm gonna, again, this case sucks to work on. Um, <coughs> guys, why did I do that? What made me think that was a good idea? Alright. So we got that. So we know that the RAM is probably good. Um, I'll just stick bull sticks in there for now. Why not? Yeah, we'll stick one stick in there. I changed my mind. Um, somebody says, Smoker's PC. Uh, doesn't seem like it. It just seems like an, a dusty old shop PC to me. Yeah, no smoke residue, no abnormal yellowing, so I think we're okay. No smoke damage there. Um, add some alcohol to the RAM slots. It's a component for the smoke. Yeah, not a smoker's machine. The RAM slots actually look pretty clean, probably because they've had RAM in them. Um, I'm just wondering if maybe the CPU isn't quite seated properly. But of course, because this is a pain in the ass case, the only real way to reseat it is to pull the motherboard out. But also, because it's not a pain in the ass case, all we have to do 
is unscrew that right there, and the whole thing slides out. Which I say, and then can't get it slid out. There we go. That is one of the good things about this case. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I can't quite get that out. Ah, there it goes. Alright, so all the capacitors down here, those are all good. And, ooh, that CPU is extremely loose. Yes, that was the necessary amount of force. Alright. Oh boy. Look at that CPU cooler. That is properly clogged. Like all the way through. No air getting through that. So it's no wonder that the fan sounds the way it does. Um, you shouldn't have power plugged in while doing that. Yeah, well, eh. I know what I shouldn't do, but I just do it anyway sometimes. Actually, on the PCs that I work on at work, which are brand new machines, um, sometimes they need their memory reseated because they're on the ground and they get kicked. And, um, yeah, sometimes I don't remember to unplug them, but those are still fine. So we got a Pentium 3 733. It's an SL3XN from 2000. Awesome. So while I'm here, I guess I should probably clean those contacts off. Just in case. Because it definitely wasn't slotted in there 100%. There is some dirt coming off of there. Alright, so that's cleaned up. Uh, you have known good memory, try the other memory as a capital idea. Yep, I will swap around the memory as needed. I love those old slotted CPUs. Yeah, I do too. There is something to be said about the simplicity of just of them in general. Uh, up until a couple weeks ago, I actually had I think 30 of them uh, in my in my stock. I had uh, a whole bunch of Pentium 2s, Pentium 3s mainly. There were some slotted AMDs, um, a bunch of Celerons. I had a whole bunch of them and I ended up selling them to a guy who collects them. So I was happy to see them go to somebody who could actually use them. So unfortunately if this one's bad, uh, which I don't think it is because they're usually pretty robust, but it means I don't have another one to put in there unless I steal it from my PC, which I don't really want to do. Um, Dell Latitude D820 says, hi. Hello. Your name sounds familiar. I feel like either you've commented on my stream before or I've seen your video or something. Not really sure. Uh, anyway, let's find my brush. I'll try to clean this sucker out. Gross. <laughs> Can you see all that? Oh, that was stupid. Why the hell did I do that? It's all in my keyboard. I'm gonna need to vacuum. Yeah, we're gonna leave that unplugged for now, because that is extremely noisy. It should be fine for, you know, just testing purposes. Yuck. Alright. Make sure there's nothing in the slot. Looks pretty clean. Go ahead and shove that thing back in there. 
I heard it. I heard it click. Both the tams have clicked in. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna need to take like a, a bath after this. It's a lot of dirt, a lot of grime. Um, okay, so that's good. Let's go ahead and plug the power back in. Back together a little bit. Cool. So, right, turn the power switch on. Got one stick of RAM. One stick of RAM reseated the CPU, cleaned off the CPU, and yeah, that's it. So let's see if that helped us at all. Um, what? <laughs> now we have nothing at all? What did I break? Uh-oh. Oh. oh. When I moved the motherboard out, apparently I unhooked all of the front panel I.O. Every single one of them. Uh, all right, let's see. Where's the front panel switch? Which one are you? You look like power switch, and you look like speaker. Let's try one more time. Got on the first try. Alright, so we had a 1, 3 postcode, so let me go ahead and uh, ASUS postcodes, because I don't remember what that means. So it was 1 and then 3 short. I think that's a graphics issue. BIOS beep, one short beep, three, or one long beep, three short beeps. No VGA detected, okay. Um, well, that's getting somewhere. I really hope this card isn't dead. This is like the only thing I actually wanted out of here. Clean it off. Let's put the CMOS battery back in there. Yeah. Oh my god. I can't get it in the slot. What is life? Come on. There. So put the CMOS battery back in. Let's reseat this video card. That feels pretty snug. Video's plugged in. Let's try it again. Hey, we got video. No freaking way. Ah, I missed like all of that. Um, shut up. Alright, so it went right to BIOS setup. I didn't touch anything. But we do have a USB keyboard. Neato. So, CPU speed should be 733. I guess it just needed us to set that up. Oh, this is cool. I'm so glad it's actually working now. So we've got a, let's see, what might that be? A Max Tor drive, maybe a 20, oh no, duh, it says it right there. Wait, no. Yes? <laughs> I don't know if that's maximum 
it says uh, maximum logical block address capacity 8 gigs. I don't know what CHS capacity... Oh, CHS. Okay, so I guess it's an 8 gig drive? Maybe? I don't know yet. We'll have to figure it out. Uh, oh, I got some comments. Nice BIOS for such an old machine. Boom. Uh, which windows do you want to put on this machine? I'm not sure. I think if I do anything, it'll probably be Windows XP, just because I like Windows XP. Um, yeah, probably Windows XP, and I, I would assume that's what this thing is running right now. You can try a lightweight Linux. I uh, could do that. Not, not a huge fan of Linux, but um, if I find a live CD that I kind of like, maybe I'll do that. Try Windows Vista? No. No. I have respect for myself. <laughs> yeah, I know Windows Vista isn't that bad, but I, I never cared for it personally, and on a machine like this, I think we'd be here for about eight hours trying to get it installed. Not because it would have problems, just because it would run so poorly on a machine like this. All right. So it looks like we got an 8 gig drive. Um, that's interesting. As I go through and uh, select auto, it's populating the name of everything. So we got, I, I don't know what that would be called, an FX4820T. Whoever makes that, I have no idea. HP CD Writer plus 9. Installed memory 128 megs. Awesome. So I'm actually going to kill it right now. I'm going to put this other stick of memory in so that while we're testing, because I'm assuming this thing already has an OS on it, um, I want it to run at some kind of reasonable speed. And I don't think 128 megs is going to really give us the speed I'm looking for, because that is pretty low for Windows XP. All right, turn it back on, and power it on once again. Windows XP is good. I still have some PCs uh, with this OS. I do too. Not as many as I used to. Look at that. Post right away, except it thinks it's a thinks it's a Pentium three three sixty six. So we'll have to go and set that again. 733, thank you very much. Um, oh, that's right, I didn't save it. Duh. Go ahead, save changes, reboot. See if we can get anything out of this. Yeah, Windows XP is a good OS. Uh, the only thing that's, that's kind of killed it for me is uh, internet browser support. If it had better browser support, then I'd probably use it for a lot of my machines down here. Um, unfortunately, that's just not the case. You know, you can still use it on the internet, but it's uh, not what it used to be. Looks like we got Windows 2000. I was not expecting that. I'm going to turn this away just for a second um, so that I can make sure there's no personal names or information that pop up because this is the first time, of course, that I've ever turned this thing on. Put this back down so I feel a little bit better about that. Windows is starting up. So the guy that sold this to me, um, as I think I mentioned, he was a cabinet maker, and he had this a pretty nice business, actually, or has the nice business still. And uh, this was a machine he used from when it was new, probably in 2000-something. Um, 2001 maybe a little bit earlier, 
up until 2010. And he says he used it every single day. He also said that it has been through one hard drive replacement. So it originally had whatever, and now it's got an 8 gig hard drive. I don't know why you would put it in such a small drive if it was replaced recently. But hey, that is the case. Still waiting for the desktop to come up. Um... But yeah, when he sold it to me, he didn't tell me anything like, you need to erase everything, um, it's still got all the data on it. He just said, here you go. So, I did my due diligence and told him, you know, anything that's on it, I'm going to erase, don't worry. Um, but of course, I am going to look at it first, because I want to know what it was used for in the past life. Now we got a desktop. But... Uh, I got no keyboard or mouse. Hmm. Yeah, I'm glad I turned the screen away because it is all of course art, actually looks like paintings, but there are some there are some breasts on the screen right now. There are definitely some of those. Okay. Um hmm. I don't know if we're gonna get anywhere right now. I might have to shut it down and find myself a PS2 keyboard. Uh, Dell Latitude D820 says, I bought a dead Alienware for 250 euros with an i7 6700 and a GTX 950, 16 gigs of RAM, Windows 10. Um, bought a new board for 40 bucks and now it works. Was it worth it? Probably, yeah. <laughs> I've done very similar things um, uh, with other types of computer systems. You know, iMacs, um, they'll often have dead hard drives and people will be like, I don't know what to do. I don't want it anymore. So they'll give it away. And then I spend zero dollars because I've got a whole bunch of hard drives and, and I have a working system again. So yeah, that's, I mean... Totally worth it. I don't know what model Alienware you have, but hey, an Alienware with an i7-6700 for basically 290 bucks, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Um, keyboard not plugged in. No, keyboard is definitely plugged in. I was actually just using it to, um, to go through the BIOS setup. Well, I can't get it to do anything, so I'm just going to force it off and find a PS2 keyboard to use. We'll use this, uh, we'll use this Dell keyboard that I've got. Alienware Aurora R5. Really? They have i7 6700s? It's really surprising to me. Um, the place that I work, it's actually a, a college. Um, up until a couple years ago, they had about 300, maybe 250 um, Aurora R4s. And I've been you know, working on those for quite some time. And they're pretty solid machines. Um, here we go. But they've got um, i7-3820s, and a couple of them have 4670s or something like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's cool. Um, Despite what, looks like the CMOS battery's dead. Despite what a lot of people say, you know, Alienwares are usually pretty great machines. It's just that the price that they sell for is not, they're not worth what people pay for them. But of course, if you get one second hand, that's, that's great. Um, they're very powerful, just not worth the money. I find that a weird choice of GPU in such a powerful machine. Yeah, it's 
the 9, what was it, a 950, I think? I don't remember. Yeah, a 950. I think people just kind of hear, hey, it's got uh, a 900 series card, so it must be good. Well, <laughs> not necessarily. And that is that is something Alienware might do on uh, one of their lower end machines so that they can sell it for cheaper. Makes sense. Yes, don't show the screen. Thank you. I didn't get a mouse. I did not get a PS2 mouse. Well, I guess we'll just have to go along with the keyboard for now. That sounds fancy, that's why, because it has a GTX. Yeah, there's a lot of buzzwords like, like i7. You know, somebody says, I want an i7, or my computer has an i7. To those of us who don't fully grasp, you know, computer specs, that sounds amazing. It's got an i7. But you get some pretty terrible i7s. Um, an i7 doesn't necessarily mean your computer is, you know, the fastest thing out there. It's just... Uh, I had somebody who was looking to build a gaming PC. This is when I worked at the computer shop. They wanted, um, you know, they had a budget of like a thousand dollars, and they wanted this top tier i7 that wouldn't work for many reasons. One of them being, let's see if we can install this mouse. One of them being that first of all the board didn't even support it, and he was looking to play like, like Minecraft and Roblox. He was 16. I thought Roblox was kind of a little kid game, but you don't need. It was like an i7-6700K. You don't need that. <laughs> you barely need an i3. Um, an i5 is ideal. You know, I can get you a high-end i5 for much less than the i7 you're looking for. It would actually work in your system. But no, he had to have that i7, so... He ended up spending... like $300 more because I had to give him a different board that would work with it. And different RAM. And... <clears throat> Excuse me, I think he ended up putting, this was a couple of years ago, I think he ended up putting like a, a 960 in it that was from a manufacturer I've never heard of, but he insisted that I buy it because it was the cheapest one. And, um, you know, after some point of arguing with customers about, you don't really need this, maybe you should buy something else that's better, without actually saying that you know best because you're the one who actually does all of this for a living, you just kind of give up and say, you know what, you're gonna, you gotta make your own bed and lie in it, I guess. Um, if this is what you really want, you signed the paper that says, um, we have disclosed any information that we need to tell you, um, you know, any advice that we have, you know, we've told you what you need to know, so don't come crying to us when something doesn't work the way you want it, because we told you. And I don't know where I was going with that. I'm very, very out of it right now. Um, well, that's interesting. So I'm trying to get this background off of there. A five? No. You know, it's nothing extremely vulgar. Um, it's just a painting that happens to very... You can't really see it, but um, it shows a woman's breasts. And I, I don't know if that's okay for YouTube Live. I'd assume because it's artistic and you can't really see them 
that it's okay. So I guess I'm just going to show you because I can't seem to get the um I can't seem to get the picture to go away. <laughs> so there you go. Oh, you know what? I'll actually cover it with the corner of the screen. How about that? Yeah. They're they're right around here. Poke 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 poke. Um yeah, you can't see anything on that one or that one. So I guess we're okay for now. Oh. Never mind. They're just pictures that I close. Awesome sauce. You guys thought you were going to see some boobs. Right, let's do an auto adjust here. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of some stuff here. Yeah, there's nothing. Nothing that would really give away who owned this computer, and I'm sure it doesn't even matter. The guy didn't seem to care, and I trust you guys will not do anything with the information, because what is there to do with this information? Okay, so <clears throat> in the BIOS, the hard drive showed up as an 8 gig, or maybe that was 8 gig sections or something. I don't know, but it shows up as 128 gigs here. So I don't know what's up with that, but it's got the upgraded hard drive that I thought it had, I guess. Interesting. So there we go. Got six, 654 megs of RAM. Device manager is what I'm looking for. I'm curious to see what kind of video card it has. So it's a Riva TNT2 Model 64. Hmm, now that I think of it, this might actually not be the card I'm looking for. This seems like it's going to be not a 64 meg card. I don't remember how to, how to look at what specs it has. Why don't we just use the good old Google to figure it out? So it's a Riva TNT2 model 64. How about that, like a 16 meg or something? That would really suck. Mm, 32 meg, 16 meg. Maybe somebody out there in the viewing audience can tell me what it might be, but I'm not quite sure what it is. What it is. Okay. Uh, what do we have installed? Got a lot of interesting stuff on here. Um, a lot of junk. There's some DriverWiz software. It's like three different AV softwares. PC Pit Stop. That sounds kind of scammy. Um, video, VLC, Winamp, Media Finder. So there's some music stuff. QuickBooks, because I think the guy used it as for a QuickBooks machine. Password Breaker? Yeah, why not? Yeah, that looks, that looks very, very legitimate. Nice. Huh. I don't know what else to show you guys on here. If you have anything you want to see, let me know. Just gotta continue eating my crackers. Yeah, I don't think this is the video card I'm looking for. Um, it looks like the, the Riva TNT2 only supported up to 32 megs of RAM. Yeah, and it doesn't look like what I'm looking for, so that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. 
any games on this PC? Well, let's take a look. I saw Steam on here, I thought. Steam. Team Fortress Classic. But it doesn't look like Steam is installed anymore. Um, it's looking somewhere in C. C. Program files. What am I even looking for? Steam. No, it doesn't look like Steam is on there anymore. So no TF2, or TF Classic. Uh, piano Today. Some piano software. Not really a game, though. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any games on here. Um, apart from, you know... Oh, there's Pinball on here? Pinball was in Windows 2000? I didn't know that. I thought there was only a Windows XP thing. And it's the same one. Well, that's just interesting. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Z and that one. Okay. Plunger space. Yep. Play some pinball. I can't even see where that ball is. I think. Just barely see it. I miss playing pinball. <laughs> pinball is a legend like Minesweeper, yeah. I guess they've been around for long enough, and especially on uh, when I was in school, the, the sysadmins there never removed the games folder from any of the PCs, so <laughs> they all had Minesweeper and pinball on them, so we used to play that a lot. Let's see, what's this? Word password recovery. Open office, open office password recovery. Mm hmm. Interesting. I'm kind of curious what some of this other stuff is, but I'm not going to open it up on stream because I don't want to um, disclose any more information than I need to. <clears throat> I still have somewhere two PCs from our school. What kind of PCs were they? My school, I wasn't really able to get any PCs from. Um, I almost... And it, it kind of irks me that I never actually ended up taking any. Because all the PCs that they had that they were going to junk, they set them down in the loading dock, and they eventually got picked up by, by some company. But they were down there for like, six years. It was just this huge pile of crap. Um, this was, of course, anything that wasn't on loan from whatever educational technology provider they had. And down there were like 30 iMac G3s. And they're the ones that I grew up using. I probably used one of them at one point. But I never ended up taking them. Um, I was a bit, a bit afraid of getting caught and somebody saying that I stole something. Which, fair enough, I guess that's what it would have been. But it's a shame to know that I let some of those go to waste. But they're gone now, so it happened. Uh, any music on it? Don't play it since copyright. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't have any speakers hooked up anyway. Uh, I have 16 PCs or so. One of them is a pre-built Athlon X2 220. 500 gig drive, Win 7. Awesome. Those are actually... Doesn't sound like a terrible machine for some... Some light-duty office stuff. I got an iMac G3 tray-loading strawberry. Awesome. I've never actually owned a tray-loading iMac. And it was... Up until recently, I didn't realize that... For example, the iMac I have behind me here... That's a Revision D. Uh, I think. Revision A through C, I think we're all slot-loading iMacs. But the only one I'd ever actually seen in person, the only one we had in school, the only one I've seen out in the wild, were all Revision D. So I kind of thought that, in my mind, Revision A was the older-looking one, the tray-loader, and the slot-loading ones were B through D, but 
Apparently I was wrong on that. I learned that just recently. The other PC is a Fujitsu Siemens with a Core 2 Duo. For Office it's great. I found an iMac G4 in the trash a week ago. That's cool. iMac G4s um, are really neat little machines. Let's see if I can do something on this computer so you're not just looking at nothing. Um, I really... There's something about the way that the iMac G4 looks that really encompasses kind of the the height of Apple um, before they went to the iMac G5 design, which was pretty much carried through throughout all current iMacs. It was so, so different and just looked very early 2000s. It was just such a cool looking design. Um, I owned an iMac G4 for a little while. I got it from... Let's see that. Oh, I'll tell you what I was thinking in a second. I got it from um, the computer store that I actually ended up getting a job at. The guy was just going to throw it out. And it was in good shape. It worked fine. And I had it for a little while. Um, it was actually out in my parents' uh, woodworking shop for three years. And at one point, I went out and I checked the uptime on it because I was curious how much they used it. And it had been on for, like, a year and a half without being powered off. And it was still going just fine. I was a little surprised at that. Uh, unfortunately, I ended up getting rid of it a little while ago because I never really use it. And, you know, didn't have any special attachment to it. But um, I just really liked the way the, the G4 iMac looked. In fact, I saw a picture the other day. Um online of somebody who had set up like this pristine looking iMac, I think it was on Reddit, and you know had an iSight attached to it, and it just, it's such a beautiful machine. Uh, really made me miss having one, but I would never buy one again, probably, because, excuse me, I pickups, because um, I just never use it. I would look at it. So what I was I don't know if you can read what's on the screen here, but this folder right here, down at the bottom, it says D-Link, uh, and it's in the Downloads folder, and initially I thought it said Drunk. So I was like, hmm, am I going to see some pictures of drunk people naked in the Downloads folder? don't know if I should open that. So we got Drivers, Nick, so it looks like Drivers for the network card. Got some music on it couple things, don't really know what those are, the untitled ones. Come Alive, Open Heaven, Beautiful Ending, Stay With Me, don't know who that's by. Got some music on there, Paychecks, it's like some software, I won't go too deep into there. So what other program files do we have? One click download, wow that sounds like it's not taking all my information and selling it somewhere. Corel Painter, C Cleaner, Driver Wiz, that sounds great as well. Hazard Recovery, Family Search, maybe there's some family tree software here. It's got GIMP 2.0. I want this. What is this? Not a valid Win32 application. Hmm. Interesting. Got Firefox, Open Office. PC Pit Stop. I'm kind of curious how terrible that sounds. Maybe we'll take a look at PC Pit Stop and see what it is. Casa Smart Draw 2008. VLC Winamp. Okay, that's cool. Uh, I think I saw it on here. It's PC Pit Stop garbage thing. No, maybe it was in the start menu. Optimize. Let's look at this trash. Can you do a video live stream on your Mac? I mean on my iMac G3? Uh, I could do another one if I have some time and some motivation to do the live stream. 
Um, definitely not today, I think, by the end of this. I will be well and truly tired, because I've been going for... I just saw it. Where the hell did I see it? An hour and 15 minutes. So, yeah, not today, but maybe at some point I'll do a live stream on the, uh, on the iMac G3. I've actually been looking for some spare parts for the G3 because the optical drive in it is no good. Um, it doesn't eject. I've tried to fix it, and it doesn't read all the time either. So I'm looking for a new DVD drive, slot load of course, for that one. Uh, I've also got a couple parts on the way from some guy from one of my Facebook groups. Uh, there's a graphite plastic colored um, USB optical drive, which will fit that. I'm really trying to get my my setup together. I want all period correct peripherals so it looks just like I remember it. So got a couple things I'm waiting on but yeah maybe eventually I'll do a live stream about the uh, G3. Only G4 I got is my iBook G4 with a 1.33 gigahertz and 1 gig of RAM. Yeah the iBook G4s I, I enjoy. I kind of like them. It was my first real, you know, powerful laptop. I have... I don't actually remember what it is. It's sitting back there. Oh, my foot's asleep. Oh, that does not feel good. Oh, ouch. Yeah, back there somewhere I've got my um, iBook G4. I think it's a, either a 1.07 or a 1.33. It's also got a gig of RAM some hard drive in it, running Tiger. Um, yeah, I was looking for a laptop right at the very tail end of when PowerPC was still usable, and I ended up buying that, and it worked really well. Um, it's a, it was a good machine for the time, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's useless now. But I keep it around just because it was my first Mac laptop. I felt really fancy having it. Does a slot loading uh, for iMac need to be a Mac drive? Mm, I don't. I don't know. I think it kind of does. Uh, there might be some kind of firmware incompatibility if you use a non-slot loading drive. But I really don't know. That's a good question. Because I've been looking on eBay just about every day for anything labeled iMac G3, slot loading DVD drive, something like that, or a G4 Cube slot loading DVD drive because I think they're the same drive, but I can't find anything. Um, I just haven't been able to find much. It doesn't look like we're going to get anywhere with that. We have GhostScript par.bz2. I, like I, I can open that. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with all the software on this. It doesn't look like it can find a lot of things. Let's, let's open up. Uh, let's open up Ad Watch 2007. What the hell is that? Not available in free edition. Okay. What about Crucial Scan? It's probably gonna give me a virus. It's doing something, it's chugging away there. Okay, that looks properly screwed up. There's a whole bunch of bookmarks in here. I guess I won't go ahead and open up any of it. And aware 2007, isn't that some kind of like antivirus-like thing, if I remember correctly. I haven't heard of Adaware in such a long time. I use a DVD, or a USB DVD for my iMac because the drive does not read properly. Yeah, that's what I've been doing too. I found a, uh, it was an external Plextor, or Max Plextor sounds right, um, optical drive, but even though it works and it's, you know, exactly what I need, it doesn't really fit the theme of the iMac G4, uh, iMac G3. It's more of a, it would look better placed next to something aluminum, because it's an aluminum enclosure. 
I'm really looking for something that kind of looks like it belongs with the G3, which is why I've got the um, another USB one on the way here. Looks like license never expires. Well, it says type free edition license never expires, so yeah, I guess not. Last system scan, 7-11-2010. And like I said, it was last used in uh, 2010, so maybe that is the last day this thing was powered on was uh, July, I had to think about that, July 11th, 2010. Interesting. What else, what else? Recycle bin. Just the two things I threw in there. Rio. It's like some, some personal stuff in there. Um, ELV. Pictures. Yeah, I guess I won't open up too much else in here. I really, I, I really want to find out what size of video card this thing has, what the, the memory capacity is. I guess it's right there. 16 meg. So no, that's not the one I'm looking for, definitely. But it's okay. I'll live. So I guess that's about all I have to show you with this. If there's anything else you guys want me to talk about or to show you, let me know. I have another one of my delicious peanut butter crackers. CPU is toasty. I guess I kind of did need that CPU fan. Oh well. So it looks like it came with Windows 98 SE. So that's the same thing um, that my uh, computer came with originally. I do know some benchmarks that work on 2000. Ooh, that's, that's an interesting thing to try. Fire it back up. Let's do some benchmarks. So Let's see, we probably got um, probably got 3D Mark 2001 SE, Future Mark 3D Mark 2001 SE. Let's see if I can download that and have that work. Uh, I got my USB here. I already know this thing's gonna run like total garbage if it runs at all, but I think that's the fun of it. Let's go ahead and download that. Hopefully that doesn't tank my connection. Sometimes downloading things doesn't doesn't do good things with my internet. Copy to the USB. Check the USB. Look at that. I went, found it, downloaded it, put it on a USB. Still not booted up yet. Copy time. So, um, oh, we're out of focus as hell. Come on. Let me plug this in, and then I'll finish trying to figure out what I was going to say. Not being able to focus. Um, oh my god, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh huh. Um, Okay, what I was going to say, now I remember, is now that I've, you know, got rid of a lot of my excess stuff that I, you know, computer stuff that I haven't really had any desire to use and really just kind of wanted it out of the way, I'm left with just a couple of things. 
and you know some things that might be interesting to talk about are the Mac 512K. That's got a big story behind it. That's a really cool machine which I'll probably never get rid of partially just because of the story. Um, the iMac G3, that, I mean, there's always something to say about an iMac G3. Uh, this machine I've got here, or my similar looking machine, you know, um, it might be interesting to do some live streams or just some videos in general about uh, those computers. And I guess where I was going with that is because I've got much less stuff, it'll be easier to pick one of these things to talk about and do a whole bunch of content about it. Um, you know, that's what I like about some other some other YouTubers. Uh, was it B Bishop CM? B Bishop PCM? I think he's got two P's at the end of his name. B Bishop CM, whatever, you know who he is if you've been on YouTube and watched these kind of videos. Um, he often makes a bunch of videos about one computer uh, in his spare time, of course. So, I kind of like to do the same thing, not just spend 10 minutes looking at one thing, shelve it, and never look at it again. I want to do a whole bunch of videos, and yeah. <laughs> Basically what I'm getting at is that with this machine, you're probably going to see it uh, at least a couple more times where I mess around with it and I don't know, do various shit with it. I'm getting kind of tired right now. I've been up for, well, not that long, quite honestly, but um, talking, just in general, kind of tires me out a lot more than it used to. I'm still waiting for this to install the flash drive. Uh, this is password. Password.com. Brute benchmark. If this this one ends up not working, then I will go and download those. Um, probably not going to stream for much more than another 15-20 minutes. So I got some other stuff that I'd like to do. Let's copy this over to the desktop. Wait a little while. Yeah, I. I can make it so that uh, links are allowed in my chat, but even though I'm sure, you know, all eight of you who are watching are probably not trying to post malicious links, um, I just have it disabled anyway because I don't want to deal with it. But yeah, I'll take a look at those again if, um, if this one ends up not working. But this seems like kind of a period correct benchmark to be running. I will say, this is actually really fast. I thought it was going to be slow and just full of viruses and crap, but no, it's it's a little performing machine. Okay, I thought we just blue screened or something there. Something that uh, that blew up on me recently was my pair of speakers that I had for my PC over there. Um, I don't even remember where I got them, but I've had them forever. Uh, they're little Harman Kardon. They came in both white and black. They stand about maybe six, seven inches tall. Um, you know, pretty little things, but they've got some pretty good sound quality, some pretty good bass to them. And I don't know what happened, but some component in them started to overheat, and the speaker started to smoke. And I was like, what the hell? I had the right power supply, it was all plugged in right, just overheated and died. So I ended up not bothering to fix it, because, I mean, they're, they were free speakers at some point, I'm sure. 
Um, but I'm, I'm kind of on the lookout for another pair, because I don't know why those died. Yeah, that was a little bit upsetting. A little bit scary, because smoke started coming out of my speakers. Uh, username, registration code, well, let's purchase it later. I don't care about either of those. Sounds like we got some hard drive activity. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I should have put that shortcut on the desktop. With 3D Mark, you might need the key and the, uh, and the name code should be on the site. Yeah, it looks like I can just run it in trial mode. I don't know what the limitations are. Maybe I will have to do that. All right, what have we got here? I've actually never used this before. I've only ever heard of it. Um, well, I guess we'll just hit benchmark and see what it does. Time remaining six minutes. Well, <clears throat> I'll let it run, and if you guys have something you want to talk about, then we'll talk about that. So we're doing a... Looks like we peaked at 22 FPS there. That's not very good. 2324, holy shit, we got a performing machine. Oh, rip. R.I.P. Higher Q, lesser not equal, not less or equal. I miss Windows 2000 sometimes. This is I would expect this of Windows ME, but not Windows 2000. So I don't know what that about that was about. Oh shit! You know what it is? I never plugged in the CPU fan. That is a toasty heat sink. Yeah, why don't I, uh, why don't I just turn that off? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> My bad. Um, hmm. Well, I'm going to assume that this fan is still stupid loud, but I'm going to plug it in anyway. Ouch. Why am I so dumb? Why is everything so hot? Hopefully I didn't kill it too much. Oh. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know if I can handle that noise. Unfortunately, I don't have another fan to put on it, but that fan is so freaking loud that I don't want to run it. Um... During the last boot up, your system hung for improper frequency combination. Interesting. Well, it should be 733. Oh, it's because I, it's because I killed the power to it. That's why. Everything, everything should just be automatic, as far as I'm concerned. It is definitely a 733, and it seems to set everything else by itself. All right. Well, maybe I can scrounge up. Oh, you know what? Let's let's do this. Um. Hmm. Take out my bucket of many fans. And we'll just aim a fan at it, because that seems to be the best I'm going to be able to do. Um, Alright, so we got this fan, which will probably completely blow up whatever, you know, power regulation stuff is on there, because that's a biggie. Uh, yeah, let's try this one, why not?
All right. So I put a fan on top of there. That seems like it'll blow some air out there. Yeah, I can actually feel the warm air coming out of it. So we'll leave it that way for now. That's obviously not ideal, but it will have to do. And I'll try to run the benchmark one more time. Now it might just be uh, the power supply is kind of getting weak and it can't deliver enough power. That's extremely likely. Or I really think the CPU just got hot because I didn't have a fan plugged in. <laughs> But hey, we'll see. Maybe later today, I'm gonna, you know, grab some lunch because it's almost three o'clock now and all I've had were my peanut butter crackers all day. But I'll, I'll grab some lunch, um, do some thinking, figure out, you know, what I want to do with this. I'm gonna do something with it. Um, maybe it'll be a video, probably won't be another live stream today unless I'm really feeling it. I probably won't be. I'll figure something, something else out to do with it. Camera. Comment says, awesome stuff. I have a PC with an AMD K6 450, 320 megs of RAM, but I need to get a 40 gig hard drive for it, max that the BIOS recognizes. Um, if you're actually looking for a 40 gig hard drive, I might be able to help you out. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm not trying to sell anything to you, but I notice you're in need of one, and I think I might have a 40 gig hard drive for you. Um, you, know, you can have it for the cost of shipping. So if, if you want that, send me an email. My uh, email is my username at gmail.com. Just thought I'd help you out. Of course, if you're if you're not in the United States, then shipping might be a little bit pricey. So that's up to you. But the offer stands. Because I am still, even though I've got all the parts behind me nicely organized, I still got a lot of parts. And I'm, I'd really, I'd really rather not just throw them out. I'd rather sell them. Uh, either get some money or donate them to somebody who can actually get some use out of them. So I think we got a little farther than this before. Oh, we're locked up. We haven't blue screened yet. But I think we are frozen. I think that was about the same spot I got to last time. Hmm. CPU is not all that hot. Yeah, but I, I can't even get the numlock light to change. So it looks like we're frozen. Maybe this benchmark just wasn't meant to be. But we'll try another one. Oh, reset button. Oh, that's right. I unplugged the reset button. Rip. Got a force powered off. Power that back on. Uh, let's see, Jacob suggested pass marks, so let's take a look. Oh, got too many screens, too many things on my screens. Um, what was it? Passmark.com slash down. Oh, I got to spell it right first. Passmark.com uh, slash download slash P T underscore download dot HTML HTM What's the last one that supported I'm not sure if the newest version supports Windows two thousand, etc. So let's just go with the next newest version, which is version 8, which I'm really surprised still supported Windows 2000. Let's see how the CPU is doing. 
yeah, it's not it's not hot anymore. It's not blowing hot air, so that's good. But it definitely was very hot when it crashed that last time. So you see that? I remember that being, not this, but I remember um, having an issue on Windows 98 and Windows 2000 where I would change the background and then change it to something else, but the original background would still show while the computer was booting up. Um, yeah. <laughs> but of course, it wouldn't be a Windows 2000 oops, machine if I didn't tile Prairie Wind across it, so now now we got a Windows 2000 box going. It's really not looking that good in that corner. There's not much else I can do to make it look good for you. That's about it. Looks like we're dwindling down on viewers here. We were up to nine people at one point. More than that? Ten people? Where's my mouse? We had eleven people at one point. Wow. Aren't I just popular? This thing smells like old computer. I can smell... I don't know if it's that it's warm or what the thing is, but it, it gives me a it just reminds me of something else. It is so cold down in this basement. It, w it wasn't actually that cold until just recently because I was going through um, all the duct work in this house just to look and make sure there weren't, weren't any leaks uh, because the heating bill was pretty high and I it's not that bad but I think we could do a little better and I noticed that some of the vents didn't have very much blowing from them uh, particularly the one upstairs so I know you can't see it but the, the furnace is there kind of off screen um, in a different section of the basement and the heat vent for upstairs comes out the top goes over and goes up but I noticed that even though it's you know it's kind of going kind of a far away there wasn't much air going up at all um, so I started looking around for any leaks there might be and I found up where I installed my um, my box for my, my what is it? You can tell I've been streaming for an hour and forty five minutes. My my electrical socket. I can't think of the right word for it. You guys know what I mean. When I installed that, I had to break away some of the some of the wall. It's just a, a wood paneling to uh, to run the wire. And in that hole, I noticed there was a lot of warm air coming out of there, and I always thought there was a vent there. But it turns out that there was no vent there, and in fact, the the ductwork had separated, and there was like a two-inch gap where the air was coming right out of the furnace, starting to go around the corner, and then there was that gap, and it was all just blowing out. The thing is, where that gap is, it was actually blowing mostly into the wall, and also some of it into this room, and I know this wasn't intentional, it, it didn't look like professional work by any means, but yeah, it was all just blowing into the wall. <laughs> so I fixed that, and upstairs is a lot warmer now, but consequently this room is freaking cold all the time, because there's no heat. Urgh. Um, now why doesn't this work? I had this error on something else. Not a valid Win32 application. I don't remember how to solve that issue. Hmm. That is disappointing. Let's try. Whoops. 
Uh, let's try one last thing. We will try Brute Benchmark, because that's another one that was suggested. And regardless of that one, if that one works or not, then I think we will uh, try something else. I saw that I saw that comment. You said something about 32 or 64 bit version. That's a good point. I'm actually going to download PE Test 7 and see if that works because um, Performance Test 8 is 32 and 64 bit. So I wonder if it just grabbed the wrong version because I'm using a newer operating system, something like that. So I just downloaded 7. Let's give that one try. Just thinking about it. Okay, I guess we'll just give it some time to think. Do that. <clears throat> I didn't want to do the readme, I just wanted to open it. That looks promising. Ah, damn it. Could not initialize the directio.sys driver. Could be because you're not administrator, driving is missing. Uh, okay, well, is this the same one? So this is 32. Let's run it as a different user. And run it as administrator. It must be the same one that I just, or it must be PE test 8. Oh. Okay then. Well, let's see what this thing can figure out. Are we loaded yet? Oh, yep, yeah, we're loaded. Alright, so let's just do a run benchmark. See where that takes us. Alright, so it looks like it's going. Doesn't look like I have any more questions, so unless somebody gets one in at the last moment here, I guess um, after all this benchmarking is finished, I'll probably sign off for this one. I've been going almost two hours. I did not expect that. So where I work, um, we've got a bunch of super high-end machines now. Uh, they just built a new building, put in all these new workstations, and they're uh, Dell Precision 5820s. They've got some stupid, ridiculous uh, Xeon, Xeon W something. I don't know. It's almost the highest-end Xeon you can get for less than, like, five grand. Uh, super super powerful machines. GTX 1080s, 32 gigs of DDR4, ECC, PCI Express SSDs. They're great machines. And uh, I use the newer version of this Passmark software to, uh, to benchmark one of them. And it, it was like in the 99th percentile of all machines. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, these things are actually really cool. Um, and I actually, I submitted the, the results to Passmark, and I, I tagged it with the model and, um, something else, so I would be able to find it later, but I haven't been able to find that benchmark based on, you know, the comments that I made. I don't know how to search for that. That was a little annoying. Uh, but the system itself, let's see. 
it's a workstation, so I'm going to look right now at Passmark's System Benchmarks Top 20 Fastest Servers and Workstations. And it's a ZNW 2145. Uh, let's see if I can... Quadros, that's a super micro. Third place. Yeah, it looks like it's, uh, hmm. So the, the system itself, somebody else benchmarked it with different, um, different components in it, but the system itself is actually number 12 in the fastest servers and workstations on Passmark. So that was using a different video card. They were using uh, Quadro P4000s, but uh, these have GTX 10, 1080s. So they're a little different, probably will score a little less in the Passmark rating. But yeah, um, it scored upwards of 7,000 points, which is crazy, <laughs> craziness. What is this error? Invalid video mode. Okay. I guess it's still gonna try. Ooh, look at that. Look at that 8 FPS. Yeah, that is something. Uh, Jacob says, wow, even though I put a Voodoo 3 PCI 16 meg in my PC, Passmark won't do the 3D benchmark. Don't know what to tell you about that. So I'm curious to find out how this CPU in this box we're benchmarking right now compares to the one I have in my main PC. Now, it, the one I have in my main PC is uh, a Core i7-4960X, and I've got it overclocked something hefty, and it kicks out a lot of heat, but it is still a super powerful machine. Um, let's see if I can search for it here. 4960X. So, at stock speeds, it scores 13,800 points, which puts it, I mean, looks like in the top, top 50 CPUs, but it is an older chip by, by, it is quite an older machine. You know, it's based on X79 platform. So yeah, 13,800 is the number to beat. Let's see if this thing can do that. I'm going to guess that it's not. Uh, because I'm not a moron, and I know it's not going to beat that. But I wonder how... I wonder how uh, terrible it's actually going to be. So the entire computer scores a 146.4. Mm -hmm. What did the CPU... What did the C oh, I didn't want to explain it. CPU mark. 188. 188 for the CPU benchmark. Wow, that is a blisteringly fast CPU. I wonder if they've got old CPUs on this. CPU mega list page, is that it? Nope, nope, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. It's loading the table, looks like it's gonna take a while. See, a 188.2. 0.2 matters, by the way. Against my 18,000 that I have in my main PC. Not that surprised at all, but yeah, it's, it's kind of impressive. King ASE88 says, hey, you're still alive. You're still live. Well, I'm both. I'm still alive and live. Uh-oh. Looks like our page is frozen here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to look at this particular page. And I can't go back. Oh, there we go. 
search for your CPU model. That's what I wanted. So we have a uh, an Intel Pentium. It's Pentium Dash three. If you're looking it up this way. <clears throat> God, everything it's running so slow. Pentium number three. Pentium space I I I. There you go. Let's see, do we have a 733 in here? No, we do not. Except there's more results somewhere else on this page. Where are they? Pentium 3M. Nope. 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 Doesn't look like they have a Pentium 3 733. The closest one they have is a 933, and it's got a pass mark score of 238. So, yeah, I'd say that that is about right. Oh, it's a 933S. I don't know what that means. So, yeah, there is, uh, there is the $10 PC. Um, unfortunately, it's not exactly what I was hoping it would be, but it is what it is. It was ten dollars, and it, it made for a good, a good live stream and a good look at what this PC was like. I was just happy to see another one that was so similar to the PC that I have um, out in the wild. That that was quite amusing to me. So yeah, I'll wait a couple more minutes to see if there's any more questions. And if there are not, then I'll probably end the live stream and go make some food, because I am hungry. Yeah, go been live officially for 1 hour, 57 minutes, and 18 seconds. It's probably one of my longer streams that I've done. Alright, well, looks like we got no more comments. Um, thank you all for joining me, and if you're watching this after the fact, after it's been recorded, thanks for sticking with me if you have for this whole thing. I'm sure most of you do this podcast style, because that's usually what I do, but yeah, thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, we'll see you whenever the next video or the next live stream happens to be. So, take care everyone.